Hey there, welcome back. So today we're going to set up the scripts in Godot, as well as talk about how to create a two-dimensional array in Godot. It's the old way for people who have been programming for a while, and if you haven't been programming for a while, it's going to seem a little weird. It's one of the weird things about Godot, um, but we'll get to that. So first thing we want to do is we're going to take a look at our piece scene here. So the parent of all of the other pieces, not any one of the pieces, but the main piece scene from which everything else derives. So in our piece scene here, I'm going to highlight the main node, which is a node 2D, and then I'm going to scroll down here to where you see node. Uh, right now, it should have no script attached. We're going to create a new script for this. So go ahead and just click in there, choose new script. This is the attached node script window. Uh, we can choose a language. Uh, we're going to use GD script. Uh, what it's inheriting from, by default, it inherits from whatever type of node that was. So we're just going to inherit from node 2D. We're going to use the default template. Your uh, options are default, empty, or no comments. We'll just leave it default. We have a path to save it to. I like to save my scripts to a separate folder. So I like to go to my resources folder, create a new folder, call it scripts. And then in there is where I like to save my scripts, mainly because I don't like having my scenes folder get all cluttered. Uh, and then we'll just hit create, and it will automatically create a new script. Now this new script has comments in it. Um, the script window, like I mentioned at the very beginning, it takes up the scene view. Um, however, there's an option for what's called distraction free mode. It's these four outward facing uh, arrows right there. That can make it so that it looks more like what you'd expect from like Visual Studio or something. So um, just like in Unity, this creates a blank script already with some predefined variables here uh, and methods. So first it tells you, you know, member variables go here. Uh, then there's the ready function, which if you're used to Unity is pretty much the same thing as start. And then there's commented out uh, process uh, with a argument of delta. Delta is essentially time dot delta time. It's how much time has passed since the last frame. And this is called every frame, similar to update in Unity. So what we're going to do here is just set up uh, one variable really quickly. We'll be revisiting this relatively soon to set up more than just that one variable. But for now, we're just going to have um, an export. Export means it's visible in the inspector, kind of like having it be public. And the type of export is a string and then we have its name, and its name is variable color, which is going to be the color of the piece. So I'm going to go out of distraction-free mode here, and if I click on my piece, um, you can see that I now have script variables that show up above anything else. Color is null. So I'm going to go through my uh, different scenes here, my different pieces, and uh, oh, I guess I need to save my scene. So, save all scenes. And if I go to any of my pieces now, I can start assigning color. So I'm going to do that really quickly here. Uh, so blue, I got green. Oh, hey, look. Somehow it already had a color. OK. Uh, I got light green. I got orange. I got pink. And the last one I have is yellow. So they all have their colors already assigned. Um, all right, cool. So now um, I'm going to go back to my game window. And in my game window scene, I'm going to add a new child node. And this is just going to be a regular old node 2D. I don't need anything else. Uh, I'm going to make sure this is positioned at 0, 0. So go ahead and open up your transform and make sure the position is 0, 0. I don't want it to be anywhere else. And I'm going to rename this to be uh, grid. And this is going to be all of the logic for our game grid. Now, for grid, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a new script. Uh, inherits from no TD, default. I'm going to choose a different path than the default one to save my script there, um, and then choose create. Now, this is going to be a little more complicated. So our grid script has to have quite a few variables in it. So first, I'm going to make a comment here just so I can be a little neat with the way I'm setting stuff up. 
This is going to be our grid variables. So I'm going to have one for how many um, spaces wide I want the grid to be. And I want that to be something I can change in the inspector. So I'm going to do export uh, of type int variable width and export of type int variable height. Um, I'm also going to need to have an X start, a Y start, and an offset. And we talked about those um, two videos ago about exactly what those are. So uh, export of type int X start and export of type int Y start and export of type int offset. I'm going to be using those next time. I'm not going to be using them in this video. Um, also, I'm going to have to have a, uh, a two-dimensional array that holds all of my variables. Now, a two-dimensional array is essentially just like an XY coordinate system. So I'm going to have it so that my 0, 0 uh, column and row is down in the lower left. The columns are the x coordinates, so when I say 0, 0, I mean column 0 and row 0. Uh, and then 0, 1 would be 0 column, 1 in the row, so it would be essentially the same place that you'd expect 0, 1 to be on an x, y coordinate plane. Um, I'm going to call that array uh, all pieces. Oops, but I have to do var. Uh, all pieces is equal to and I'm going to set it equal to an empty array to start. Now, here's how you create a 2D array in Godot. And like I said, if you've coded before, this should be pretty familiar if you're not necessarily relatively new. Um, if you are relatively new, this is going to seem a little weird. So I'm going to create a new function here. And I'm going to call this function make 2D array. I'm so used to C sharp. Okay, so make 2D array is this little function we're going to use to create a 2D array. And what we're going to do for this is we're going to create a temporary variable and we're going to call that array. And this is equal to an empty array. Then we're going to go over uh, every part of the width and every part of the height. So for i in width. Uh, this is one of the ways that you can create a for statement in GDScript. If you're used to Python, it should be pretty familiar to you. If you're used to C-sharp, it's going to seem much shorter. Uh, in C-sharp, you'd have to do for and then parentheses, var i, or not var i, you'd do int i, uh, i less than width, i++. plus uh, plus. By default, your for loops are always going to do the plus plus part. And when you say i in width, it means from 0 to 1 less than whatever width is. And then I'm going to do 4j in height. And what I'm going to do here, oh, sorry, yeah, that's what I meant to do. For i in width for j in height is I'm going to take my, in between these two, sorry. <laughs> so for i in width, I'm going to take my array and append to it, which means to add at the end, an entire another array. So I'm going to take every spot on this array, and I'm going to add to every spot on this array an entire new array. And then, for j in the height, I'm going to take my array, and I'm going to grab my j part of the array, oops, sorry, i part of the array, and I'm going to append null means nothing. So I'm just creating a blank two-dimensional array. And then I'm going to return array. So that's how you create a two-dimensional array in GDScript. Um, now this function isn't being called anywhere, so I'm going to call it from my ready function. Uh, in my ready function, I'm just going to have um, something to set all underscore pieces equal to make 2d array um, and then just to show what happens I'm gonna do print all underscore pieces um, okay cool so I'm gonna save my scenes and uh, when I hit play here 
since all I'm really doing is just printing out, I should see something on the output. Nope. Unable to iterate on type nil. What did I do wrong? Oh, I never assigned the width and height. So to do that, I'm going to go to my grid. Um, my height is going to be 10 units. My width is going to be 8 units. My x start, I think, was 64. My y start, I think, was 800. And my offset is 64. All right, cool. So let's try that again. All right, so there's my um, thing. And here's my two-dimensional array. Um, right now it's just filled with null, but every one of these brackets represents one column of the array. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This represents column 0. The next one represents column 1, and so on and so forth. But the whole array is just null to start. So I'm just going to stop that. So there we go. We created a 2D array. Uh, next time, we're going to take that 2D array and we're going to use it to create pieces on the grid. Uh, and then after that, we'll make sure that we create the pieces without having a match. And then we'll be able to move them around. Um, yeah, and from then on, the logic actually doesn't get too much more complicated. So thank you very much for watching. If you learned anything new, please feel free to give me a like. Uh, if you want to share this video with anybody you know who might want to learn how to program, you could absolutely do that. I'm getting close to a 1,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I have my link in the description below. You can join my Discord channel, where I'm chatting pretty much every day, and we can talk about anything. It doesn't have to be programming. Um, yeah, and have yourself a wonderful day.